guys, it's Mike from Under the Carolina Sky. Welcome to my channel. Uh, so last night I got on YouTube and was just checking out some videos and all of a sudden a uh, live video feed from M and the gang popped up and I went over and checked them out. I subscribed to their channel and um, they were doing the 10 question challenge last night live uh, from their campfire out there behind their house. I think Em and the gang are in Wake Forest, North Carolina, and uh, man, what a great video. Uh, really a lot of fun. They were answering some questions and uh, talking to us about some of their activities and the things that they like to do outside. And anyway, to make a long story short, I was nominated for the 10 question challenge. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I hope that you enjoy this and that this will be something that you'll uh, be able to learn more about me and more about what I like to do. And I'm real excited. I've never been nominated for anything before. Uh, anyway, the wind's kind of blowing. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear the wind blowing or not. It's just blowing too much for me to have a campfire tonight. And I really don't have any place else to go, so we're going to have to do this right here in my own backyard, okay? So uh, I got some things sitting out here I'm going to talk about a little bit later on. But before we get started, I'm going to pull out my questions and we're going to get on with the 10 question challenge and then I'm going to nominate some people at the end of this, okay? All right, let me get my list out here. The 10 question challenge. Thank you, Em and the gang, uh, for asking me to do this and for involving me in this. This is going to be a lot of fun. I haven't really rehearsed anything. I just wrote down the questions and I'm just going to take it off the top of my heart like it comes, okay? So I'm going to put on my spectacles and we'll see how this turns out. All right, the 10 question challenge. <clears throat> M and the gang, M, her husband Mike, and their two children, and I think Anderson, their son, was on with them last night, and he was telling us some of his funny fish stories, and I really got a kick out of that. And Anderson, if you're listening, buddy, that brings back a lot of memories. I grew up down in Florida, and I'll talk more about that later, but uh, my dad took us fishing a lot when I was growing up in Florida. I have so many memories. Those are the best times of my life for camping, and fishing with my mom and dad. So uh, thank you very much, Anderson, for sharing that with us. Uh, question number one, do you like to travel or camp alone or in a group? Well, to be honest with you, I, I like both. I like camping in a group. I think it's fun. If you can get together with a bunch of guys from the church and go out in the woods and have fun, that's all good. But I got to be honest with you, camping alone is very special to me. Going out in the woods by yourself, no one else around, the deeper in the forest I can get, the higher on the mountain that I can get, that's special to me. I like that. It's invigorating and it's thrilling. Just uh, that sense of not knowing what's going to happen next or what's out there watching you, I guess. It's just thrilling to me. I love it. I love to just be alone. And uh, I usually get a lot of thinking done when I'm alone. And um, I see things that I wouldn't normally see if someone else was alone because when people are with you, you're talking about things and somebody might point out something or, you know, you're talking about something else. But when you're by yourself, you see things that nobody else sees. So I think that probably going out alone is probably my favorite because I've got no one there to talk to me. I've got no one there to ask me questions and talk about different things. I'm focusing on the hike. I'm focusing on the trail. I'm focusing on uh, where I'm going to camp that night. I'm focusing on uh, my surroundings and the unusual rocks that I'm looking at, the tree formations, the horizon, you know, when you name it. Uh, I just like camping alone. You know, it's fun. Uh, question number two, what is the most difficult hike that you have been on? Okay, John Rock Cedar Rock Falls in the uh, Pisgah Ranger District out in Western North Carolina. I went there this past year by myself <clears throat> and uh, I got up on top of the mountain and a storm came up. I don't mind the storms and I'll talk about that in just a minute too. But to make a long story short, I took a wrong turn and I ended up doubling the loop that I was on. And folks, I'll just tell you the truth. I'm 50 years old. I was getting exhausted. I think I did about 18 miles that day and I'm not lying. Um, I mean, I hiked in circles, I hiked up and down trails, and I can't even tell you the name of them. And I got to a camping spot, I, was, I decided that that's where I was going to camp that night. Got everything all set up, ended up pulling about three or four ticks off of me. Said, nah, this isn't where I want to stay. Packed up my gear, ended up going to a different camping spot. Still had a great time though, still had a lot of fun. 
really enjoyed myself, but that was a difficult hike. I was getting tired. Uh, my pack was getting heavier. Um, I didn't really know where I was at. I wasn't afraid, um, but uh, just uh, kind of, you know, the sense of urgency with a bad storm coming. I wanted to get things set up and be able to be prepared and just didn't feel like I was totally prepared for it, you know, uh, at that time. So uh, John Rock, Cedar Rock Falls hike in the Pisgah Ranger District was probably my most difficult. Question number three, what outdoor activities do you do in the winter? Well, the winter time is one of my favorite times to go hike. I like to hike in the snow. I like to camp in the snow. I like to look at the animals in the snow. I like to watch the birds playing in the snow. You name it. I love winter. Um, I do the same thing in the winter time that I do in the summertime that I do in the springtime. It's all the same to me. So, um, you know, those are my favorite. Um, I, maybe I can post it, um, a picture of this, but my son and I built an igloo once in the snow. And I did it for him because my dad built an igloo for me when I was a little boy in northern Indiana, probably four or five years old. And it was really cool. It was a real igloo. And my son and I did it right here in the backyard a couple of winters ago when we had a real big snow. And uh, that was pretty cool. But anyway, my activities are the same. Uh, question number four, where's the most beautiful place that you have slept or camped? The most beautiful place that I have camped, I have gotten to say, if you'll go back in my videos, the very first video I did, which is only about three minutes long, I took that video on my phone. I was in, up at the chimneys at the Linville Gorge, one of my favorite places. And uh, <clears throat> that was totally unplanned. Um, I had a great time. I had no idea then that I would even launch a YouTube channel. I had no clue. All I knew was that I was someplace beautiful. I was by myself. I was having a good time and I wanted to share it with everybody. So I pulled out my little cell phone and started taking videos. But the top of the chimneys in the Linville Gorge. And uh, that night I uh, went to sleep in my tent. I woke up the next morning. I watched the clouds rise below me. I was above the clouds and that was so beautiful. I had a moment then and um, you know, I, I'm not going to tell you that I teared up, but uh, I got choked up a little bit, you know, the beauty and the awe of that and uh, being there alone by myself, drinking my coffee, uh, which I don't want to forget about, drinking my coffee and watching the clouds come up from the valley. And um, then they just engulfed me and then they just went on up into the sky, you know, over the course of the next 30, 40 minutes. And it was just beautiful. So if you ever get a chance to go to the Linville Gorge, um, that's a great place to go. It's beautiful out there. And pardon me, I'm sorry for the airplanes flying over, cars driving by, and people cutting the grass. There's no way around it in my neighborhood. There's always something going on, but hopefully that won't interfere. Uh, let's see, we are on question number five. Have you ever been injured in the outdoors? Never been injured in the outdoors. I did have an incident though, uh, a year ago, January, my son Blaine and I, Blaine by the way is Grizzly Adventures. He doesn't have a YouTube channel, but uh, he does have an Instagram and he is also the owner of Blaine Thomas Photography. Takes great pictures and uh, I'll try to put some links for that uh, below too. But Blaine and I went for a uh, uh, birthday hike for me and um, it was in January and we went to a Stone Mountain, North Carolina and uh, I don't know what happened, but I was hiking and I started to not feel too good, make a long story short, somewhere near the top, I had to lay down and I ended up passing out. And my son called 911, a rescue came and got me, and I spent the night in the hospital, but I'm okay. I don't know what happened, can't tell you what was wrong. I know that after that, I lost a few pounds. I changed my diet, I changed the way that I eat, and um, I ended up losing probably 15 or 18 pounds uh, last year in 2017, and I've kept it off, and I feel better because of that, and I'm a better hiker and camper because of it too. So, uh, you know, uh, eating carbs when it's time to eat carbs, not eating carbs when you don't need them and uh, sugar and you know different things you know like that just watching what you do but um, never been injured before uh, out in the woods but um, have had some incidents let's move on question number six do you practice any special survival skills um, I know how to use a compass I think that's really really important and um, uh, as far as other survival skills go um, you know the normal things you know making sure that you have enough food and water with you when you go out on a hike, even if you're just out on a day hike, make sure you have 
your first aid kit with you. It's so very, very important. And I'm excited too, by the way, because my work um, just gave us a CPR course yesterday and uh, some first aid courses, and I've learned a lot from that. And I feel a lot more confident now about CPR and about uh, first aid. So, you know, if you get a chance to take things like that, take a CPR class. Um, you know, learn how to do that. You might come across someone else on the trail that's having a heart attack, and you might be able to perform CPR on them until uh, rescue workers can get there. You just might save a life. So, you know, don't be afraid of that. You know, do that. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, survival skills, that's pretty much, you know, I mean, about it, the normal things, learn how to build a fire, uh, you know, know uh, knowing how to do all those things. That's all really, really important. What's your favorite recipe for cooking outdoors? Um, I don't really have a favorite recipe. I know that I like to use my Dutch oven. It's really a lot of fun to me to use my Dutch oven. I like using that outside. Um, uh, I like roasting things over the fire. That's fun to me. Roast spam over the fire. Roast your hot dogs over the fire. Catch a fish and clean it, cook it on the fire. I've made pizza on the fire. I'm going to make a video for that, by the way. <laughs> um, but uh, to me, any campfire food's good. Any hiking food is good. Uh, food on the trail and at camp is always better no matter what it is. So uh, let's move on to uh, question number eight. How do you motivate yourself to get outside and do things in bad weather? That's easy. I love bad weather. I love it when it rains. There's nothing like hiking in the woods and the pouring down rain, finding a good spot, nobody else around, putting up the tarp, laying under your tarp, listening to the rain uh, come down and pitter pat uh, on that tarp is just it's it's heaven to me I love it there's no such thing as bad weather I don't know who coined that phrase but I'm gonna say it there's no such thing as bad weather I love it I love being outside don't have to be motivated to do that number nine where would your dream trip be I love this question I'm in love with Sweden and Norway if I could go anywhere in the world to go hiking and camping and spending time in the outdoors it would probably be Sweden and Norway uh, it's beautiful uh, Go to Bushcraft Sweden's channel, check him out. And I'm gonna mention another one here too um, that is in Norway at the end of this, but I won't spoil it. But yep, for sure, Sweden and Norway, beautiful. Thousands of lakes there, gorgeous scenery. You can roam and just be free. There's, there's not a lot of people out in the woods. That would be an awesome place for me. Uh, question number 10, what is the heaviest thing you carry when you go on a hike? Uh, for me, the heaviest thing that I carry when I go on a hike, if it's going to be an overnight hike, it's probably going to be my tent. It's just about three and a half pounds, and uh, that's the heaviest thing that I carry. Um, I'm sure water would be in there someplace, but I try to plan that. I, I look ahead and see where I'm going, and I find out where the water spots are, and I, I bring a filter with me, and I filter my water. So I try not to carry too much water and try to over uh, weight myself, try to weight myself down, you know, with uh, all that water. But anyway, those are the 10 questions. Okay, so let me just say in closing, uh, thank you to Emma and the gang for involving me in this 10 question challenge. And I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm, I'm actually gonna nominate four people, and here's the reason why. I'm gonna nominate two people from Florida because I'm going to Florida next week for my dad's 80th birthday. And I'm really excited. I get to spend most of the week there with my family, my friends, and and my extended family, my aunts and my uncles and my cousins from literally all over the world, as far as uh, north as Canada and, and uh, my uh, aunt and uncle that spent time in Guatemala and Mexico and Honduras. And um, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing them too, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. But number one, I am going to nominate Florida Boy Bushcraft and Survival. Matt, I want you to do this. I like your stuff. And um, I think that you've got a great channel and uh, y'all go check him out. It's uh, Florida Boy Bushcraft and Survival, and um, I want Matt to be involved in this. The second one is also in Florida, Hike with Mike. Hey buddy, I want you to do this. I want to get to know you more. I want to hear your answers. So uh, I hope that you'll uh, be involved with this and you'll do the 10 question challenge with me. Number three, um, I don't know a whole lot about him, but uh, Corey and Caroline at uh, Wolfpack Woodcraft, I like your channel got some great stuff on there and I really enjoy watching and the video quality is just excellent and the places that you go and the things that you do are just awesome and I also think it's cool that a husband and wife um, or that a couple are involved with each other and that they're doing things together 
it just means so much more when the one that you love is beside you and when you see something beautiful you can share it with them so I want uh, Corey and Caroline from Wolfpack Woodcraft to be involved with this too and number four I'm not sure if he'll be able to do it or not he doesn't know me but um, if you ever want to watch some beautiful videos from from Norway go to the channel called Norwegian Woods I want you to go check it out Norwegian Woods if you get this message I want you to do this 10 question challenge you're really good at this um, when I first started watching YouTube videos uh, among other guys uh, that have really helped encourage me in this Tony from Blue Collar Backcountry uh, Carolina Chris you know you guys have just been so instrumental in encouraging me in getting into this but I used to watch a lot of Norwegian Woods videos and mainly because the scenery is just so spectacular but I'd like for you to be involved in this too if you would so uh, Florida Boy Bushcraft and Survival Hike with Mike Wolfpack Woodcraft and Norwegian Woods I picked four I want you guys to do the 10 question challenge too as well okay um, before I finish I want to show you a couple things real quick about an upcoming video that I'm going to do. I had a great garage sale visit about a week and a half ago on Saturday. Couldn't believe it. Walked into this garage sale, found two vintage items that I just love that I'm going to share with you. The first one is a four-party aluminum cook set. Check that out, guys. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It's so vintage. It's never been used. It's still in the box. Probably been taken out, but I don't think it's ever been used. I'm not going to unpack it now. I'm going to do that in a different video, okay? So, vintage, probably from the 70s, purchased from Kmart. How about that? Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is a nylon frame backpack from world famous products. This is the Kilimanjaro lightweight aluminum frame backpack, still in the package. Check that out, guys. Still in the package. Never even been opened. Probably from the 70s. I'm going to say, maybe older, who knows. I've debated on what to do with this. Do I keep it in the package and just display it or what? And I finally decided I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a video, probably this weekend, hopefully. I'm going to unpack this pack. Brand new Kilimanjaro frame backpack. The price tag is still on it. $34.97. I think it came from Kmart, I'm not sure. This is, uh, uh, let's see, backpack number 229. Um, it's got some pockets and things in it. I just can't wait to show it to you guys. And I've even got a plan for the package, I think. But anyway, uh, stay tuned for that, and um, we'll get a chance to make some more videos and uh, just uh, have a great time. But I really appreciate you guys watching this, my 10 question challenge. Thank you so much. And to my new subscribers, thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing to my channel. I'm over 50 now. I think I've got 52 subscribers. You guys are just awesome. When I was watching Em and the Gang, there were some guys that actually, uh, some people that actually uh, subscribed to my channel while I was watching them. Thank you so much. I don't want to let you down. Ask me questions. Talk to me. Communicate with me. And um, let's just have a really good time doing that, okay? Thank you so much for watching this 10-question challenge. I really appreciate it. Um, everybody get outdoors this weekend. Do something fun. Make a video. Put it on YouTube so we can all enjoy it, okay? So uh, for now, take care. And... Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.